it's Fun Bear Reef here. Uh, welcome back. So we're here in uh, Toronto with uh, Dmitry uh, Kumanov. We're with his uh, Red Sea 250. We're back for part uh, two. It's been about three months since our last visit. Sounds about right. He's going to tell us uh, how his tank's been going. We're going to check out all the coral growth and colorization. So thanks for having us back again. Really appreciate that. Always a pleasure, Ryan. This is great. So you want to tell us a little bit more about your tank and how things have been going over the last uh, three months? Sure. Um, so. As you can see, uh, the tank is doing quite well. Um, I, uh, since the last time you've come, uh, yeah. there's a lot more growth well, on definitely. the tank. Yeah. There's um, uh, a few colonies that, a few frags have actually become uh, mini colonies. Uh, the red planet, uh, strawberry shortcake has gone from a tiny little frag now to a, a nice mini uh, colony, fist size. Um, I got. Um, uh, I, I got some really nice coloration with um, uh, some of uh, the more exotic varieties uh, such as the Ore Voodoo. I'm yeah. starting to see a lot more blue uh, coming um, from the tank and I think a lot of it has to do with the tank starting to become a lot more mature. So uh, during the summer I've uh, kind of been slacking a little bit and I had let my alkalinity uh, to kind of start swinging, uh, as well as my salinity at some point has gone up to all the way to 40 uh, parts per thousand. Um, so I've noticed that my corals started to, um, uh, some of them started to bleach. Um, I've lost a couple of pieces, um, but this was the summer. Um, I had some other plans, but now that it's cold in Canada, yeah. um, back to uh, tending to the reef, and I've only been kind of at it for about the last month or so, and I'm already seeing a lot nicer colors. So something that uh, I was going for right from the beginning. So as you can see, the torque in the back is uh, what it should be. Um, the Sunset Monty, uh, sorry, Millipora, the, the Strawberry Shortcake and the Red Planet there are exhibiting just the right coloration uh, kind of to my standards. Yeah. Um, and some of the more uh, tougher to keep pieces uh, in the back uh, that were all brown, I'm now starting to see a lot more color. So really all comes down to um, uh, maintaining uh, the right parameters. Um, I am dosing uh, with uh, polyplap refroids uh, twice a week, twice a week uh, yeah. and that is uh, helping introduce more nutrients because with my system uh, it's nutrient poor. I'm dosing a little bit of potassium nitrate which over time I plan to exchange with um, or replace with um, amino acids, yeah. but I have to be careful not to introduce uh, too much uh, algae growth in the tank. Um, and uh, really this is it. I'm not doing any GFO, I'm not doing any um, carbon. Yep. Um, lately I've been running skimmer uh, only uh, half the time. So basically right now the skimmer is not running. If I'm at, uh, just admiring the tank, I don't want to hear the skimmer, even just a hum. Uh, but uh, after, like at night, it just comes on and it comes on maybe twice uh, throughout the day just when I'm having lunch. It's a good reminder. It's time for me to yeah. uh, get something to eat. Yeah. Uh, and uh, overall, in terms of fish, haven't been any changes. Uh, I've introduced the Azure uh, damselfish right here, uh, which I absolutely love. I think it adds a lot of character to the tank. Uh, my anemone had split uh, last night. You guys are the first ones to, to see this, which is great. Yeah. Uh, it's probably going to go into a second tank. Uh, yes, I, um, I am planning to set up another tank, uh, which is going to be a whole other project. We'll uh, talk about it yeah, in, uh, in the future. Before you're seeing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but it's all not uh, roses. Um, I've had a few issues as well. Um, so, last time when you guys were here, yeah. uh, I got a chance to try out the new uh, Tanzi power hat uh, in the sun area. I'm not sure if we'll be able to see it right now, but we'll um, see it in, uh, yeah. I guess, your yeah, next can, shot. Yeah. Uh, but basically, the idea was I was going to do a little frag section in the um, kind of crevice in there in, 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 in the sun. We were powered by the same aqua illumination hydra, but it would be 26 HD. So everything worked well for about uh, a month, and it, I would say it worked too well. The frags were growing, but also algae was growing, which meant um, algae was growing not only on the uh, 
just the, uh, the surface of the, um, of the frag section, it was growing everywhere in the sump and worst of all it was growing inside of the skimmer. So as you can imagine um, that's not something you can get yeah. into to clean uh, regularly so I had to uh, really, um, uh, first I had to recalibrate the skimmer all the time because of the algae and then at some point I just said okay forget it, uh, yanked it out, uh, put another temporary skimmer in and uh, so th there goes my plan of uh, keeping the um, uh, frag uh, in the sump. I think uh, I could try to build some sort of a contraption to self-contain the light spill but probably it's going to be a lot easier for me to just uh, either sta start another tank or get a, a little frag shelf uh, in here. I'm experimenting with a few things. There's a, uh, once you will have a shot from this angle you'll see there's a little kind of uh, false rock that has plugs in it and you know I have a few frags on this thing already but I want something a little bit more convenient because with this hobby uh, it's all about convenience. If it's something that takes me, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pain to do every week, I'm yeah. probably not going to do that. Exactly. And um, this is why I really like this tank. I only, I don't do any water changes, it's done automatically. I don't do any dosing, it's done automatically. Yeah. Um, I wish at some point I won't have to clear the glass. Uh, yeah. But I would say at least with this, uh, I get the chance to just admire my corals and get the best of uh, all worlds. Exactly. So yeah, that's uh, yeah. that's where we're at. That's amazing. Would you take us for a tour of your tank? Um, I'll bring the camera and you can uh, show sure. us Sure. So as promised, uh, this is the side uh, view of my tank. Uh, it's one of those money shots, as you can see. Um, it's all. Uh, full to the brim with the SPS um, and this is the uh, section that I was talking about this is kind of the frag it's actually uh, uh, not a real um, live rock it's uh, made out of uh, resin of some sort with holes and you can put uh, frags in there I like it a lot uh, the only thing I don't like about it is that uh, there's all these different angles uh, that the corals are growing at and sometimes it's a little bit painful to uh, maneuver and put my hand in there so I don't think I want to keep this uh, long term yeah. um, as you can see real estate is really prime over here um, there's not a lot of room uh, I've lost this coral uh, just uh, overnight. I'm not sure what it was. Maybe it was another swing of some sort or maybe it was uh, being stung by someone. But uh, fortunately this type of thing sometimes happen. Um, but as you can see, the rest of them are coloring up uh, amazingly. So I got these <clears throat> Ori, uh, I think Panapi uh, bird's nest, which is exemplary coloration. This is exactly what uh, you want. Um, you know the strawberry shortcake uh, right next to him is uh, you know exhibiting the right color. Um, this guy, I'm not sure who he is, but uh, is showing three different uh, colors, which uh, is again pretty much uh, top notch. And uh, the rest of the corals uh, are still yet to reach its potential. But um, so, for example, this uh, purple guy. Um, He's gonna show a lot more brown, but he's got a potential to be one of the most striking pieces in this tank. So hopefully a few months later when you guys come back, you will uh, see some of the changes. Green Slimer is growing very well. The Oregon Tort in the back um, and the um, Sunset Millie, um, they are all uh, quite, uh, quite well. So I'm really um, enjoying it. Now you guys uh, get to see the uh, front uh, of the tank uh, and it's kind of something that I see all the time uh, so I try to pick the best corals for this view. One of my favorites is this uh, strawberry shortcake which I have moved uh, from the other side of the tank just yesterday so um, hopefully it's gonna do well in here and uh, it's showing great polyp extension and uh, quite nice coloration but I think I can get it even better. Uh, now a few pieces to the left, um, the pink lemonade uh, is showing a little bit of white on it, I'm, but a good polyp extension. I think, again, it was my salinity or maybe even uh, something I was doing with the, um, with the uh, uh, intensity of light that uh, has triggered a little bit more of the white on the body. So I hope to have this recovered. 
but the hidden gem is right underneath it, which is the pink Cadillac. So this little guy um, was a uh, you know making quite a splash in the community about uh, a year ago, and a friend of mine has given me a little frag to uh, uh, keep in my tank and. Uh, while it's right now not showing a, a striking coloration, the most important part is that it's alive and it's doing well. And once it's grown, uh, I'm going to move it someplace where it's going to get more light and hopefully this is going to be a striker uh, right there. Now, uh, the Red Planet um, is one of my favorites uh, and I really like the um, uh, contrast between that and the uh, green, I think it's a uh, Caroliniana or uh, uh, it's a neon color, uh, smooth, uh, smooth skin uh, deep water coral. Uh, I think that uh, contrast uh, is extremely pleasing to the eye. Um, the, this freshly fragged new piece here is the Rainbow Loom. Um, it's a really unique uh, coloration. It's showing uh, pink tips and uh, it's a uh, very lush uh, green uh, color of the body. Uh, so again, one of my uh, favorites in the whole tank. And right behind him, this kind of uh, beige uh, color is, uh, is a tiramisu uh, coral, which uh, uh, is another one of my favorites. So if you look more in the back, you will see that there is the uh, red uh, dragon, which is growing very well. And I think it's ripe for the uh, uh, fragging very soon. I like the form factor and the fact that it's growing uh, high. So, uh, you know, it doesn't take uh, too much light from other uh, corals. And right next to him, um, there's this coral, which is brown right now. Uh, I'm glad to say that um, at least it's brown and not white. It used to, uh, so this one had reacted really badly when I had my, uh, my salinity swings and I thought I lost it, but it, I think it's coming back. So hopefully I won't uh, kill it and uh, you know, three, four months later, he's gonna come back to its uh, proper coloration. Uh, and obviously there's a Oregon tort in the back, which uh, is certainly one of my favorite corals and you can see it's actually very large. It's probably um, 12 inches uh, high. It just uh, goes all the way almost to the bottom, the way it's secured. Um, on the kind of right side of the tank, uh, we got, uh, as I said, Ore Voodoo, uh, one of my f favorite pieces in the tank, as well as uh, something called Rusty Nail, which is uh, uh, a really nice uh, coloration of kind of uh, rusty pink uh, color, which I really like. Um, the Fabio right below it is, um, I think it's about uh, five or six years old. I got it when it was just a single eye, just to give you, put things in perspective and, and, and show you how slow things uh, grow in the hobby. So when you are thinking you're gonna spend, you know, 20 or $30 for a single eye or you can get something that's double the size, but um, you know, cost forty dollars. Maybe it makes sense to pay a little bit extra, and you're gonna save yourselves a couple of years of, of um, experience. And uh, just a couple of words about this uh, big uh, Fabia. So this has been with me for forever. Um, I think it's at least four years, and uh, I bought it when it was about the fist size. Now this thing is. Uh, you know, it's not volleyball size, but it's 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 huge. Uh, it's actually a lot bigger than uh, it even appears right now. So it's certainly one of my uh, favorite corals uh, has been with me for the longest time. And uh, and look at all the fish that uh, came out uh, to photobomb. Um, so uh, the yellow wrasse, the uh, the banana wrasse, as well as the royal grama. Um, again, uh, I've only kept my favorite fish uh, and the. Um, uh, Royal Grandma is probably one of my favorite fish uh, of all time. Like it's just got great personality. It's not shy. It's got great colors and um, just just a, just a fun fish. Uh, as I mentioned, the anemones have uh, the anemone has just split uh, last night. So um, now I got two. Um, luckily, um, I know where this is gonna go. So uh, this is gonna be. Uh, this is going to be fun, and I really enjoy the fact that uh, the uh, uh, the clouds are uh, uh, you know resting in it. As you can see right now, this is this is probably the reason why I got into this hobby because uh, there's nothing uh, more satisfying than uh, seeing 
uh, a clown trying to bury itself into uh, into the anemone, and uh, when an anemone enjoys that, uh, so this is uh, this is this type of symbiotic relationship is uh, uh, what kind of uh, reminds you why uh, people uh, you know, stay in this hobby and uh, and what they get out of it. All right, um, one of the uh, most frequent questions I get asked is about the lighting uh, on this tank. Uh, first of all, the choice of the lighting. I've used uh, both T5 and Radiance before and why did I go with AI this time around, as well as uh, the lighting um, spectrum, the settings for the tank and how that relates to the corals. So, um, a few um, uh, parts on the history. I've used T5 before. Um, I picked it originally because, first of all, I thought the uh, uniform lighting, I really enjoyed it at the time, as well as the simplicity and the um, uh, reproducibility of the effect. Because if you look at somebody else's tank and it's doing very well, and they use a uh, sorry ATI eight bulb uh, fixture. You just have to copy exactly the same fixture, same lighting, same height, and you've just excluded one parameter uh, out of the equation of keeping the tank. Because really, all it comes down to in terms of uh, the success of keeping a tank is trying to maintain the balance between you know a gazillion different uh, parameters such as salinity, alkalinity. Um, uh, nutrition, so the nitrates, phosphates, um, organics as well as um, temperature, everything has to be, the fish bioload, everything has to be just right. And there's no uh, recipe out there for that. There's no, uh, uh, there's, there's many books that give you guidelines, but at the end uh, it all depends. If two people start the tank with exactly the same corals, uh, same fish, uh, same uh, equipment, um, I guarantee that uh, in a year the tanks will look different. They will be part of uh, representation of the uh, owner as well as his schedule or her schedule or their uh, dedication, interest and uh, just anything else that happens in life. As well as things that you just cannot even control such as, uh, I don't know, pests or uh, you know, algae or something else. Some, some tank will have um, uh, the red slime algae and the other one won't. There's all these different speculations as to why, uh, but in the end, uh, nobody quite knows. There's a beautiful tank by Richard Ross who that has nitrates of 80 and phosphates of over one, which probably and he has amazing SPS corals and and colors. Where else uh, it's a dogma in this uh, community that you know you only have to get it in the particular parameters. So, uh, it's a bit of a detour, but going back to the lighting, um, at the time when I picked the T5, I just wanted to have one extra uh, thing to, one thing less to worry about. Uh, later, once I got comfortable and I saw that I had even better coloration for, on some of the corals with my radiance, I uh, put radiance on the big tank and um, I ran it primarily to be safe. I ran it for about eight hours. Uh, hitting about 220 uh, par on average uh, and uh, it would be only blue spectrum so all three blue channels were 100% uh, max uh, but the rest of the coloration was not there no other spectrum except for um, maybe half an hour to an hour a day when I was home when I wanted to actually see uh, and admire the tank for what it is so that worked wonders for me. Um, this is something that I think is very safe. Uh, you have very little algae growth and uh, this is what I kind of subscribe to. Funny thing is, when I uh, tried exactly the same schedule on the new tank, um, the corals did not uh, take well to that. So the par was too much for them um, and just overall it was overwhelming because this was not a mature tank. It did not have enough uh, nutrients uh, nutrient buildup. It did not have. Uh, I think it's. Uh, did you hear the skimmer just uh, kicked in? This is uh, 12 o'clock. As I was saying, the skimmer comes on and off. So uh, there was not enough uh, nutrients in the tank, and also there was a shock. All the corals were moved to uh, a smaller tank. Uh, they were under stress of the move. They were under stress of not having enough nutrients, uh, and the same intensity of light. Uh, was detrimental to their health. So I had to bring the intensity down 
and uh, the tank uh, reacted well and after a while I was able to rise the intensity as I've added more fish, added more coral food and um, got to the point where we're at right now. So uh, I've picked uh, AI this time around just because I wanted to try something new. Um, I heard a lot of good things about it. I also, uh, although I have no doubt that uh, both Radeon and uh, AI or many other reputable LED lights uh, can produce great pigmentation in corals, uh, especially SPS. Um, it, what is also very important to me is the aesthetics uh, and the uh, look of the tank, the sort of the color rendition uh, that I get by just looking at the tank. So I'm very particular about uh, trying to get that blue uh, with white crisp uh, look um, without any tints of you know, purples or, or, or greens or, or deep blues and whatnot. And I found um, that uh, AI was giving me exactly that. I'm able to get I'm able to dial in the look uh, to be just where I want it to be, which is very similar to what you see right now. There's a blue with a little bit of a white in it. Um, I'm very uh, excited to try uh, the new Radeon G4 that just uh, came out. So uh, we'll talk about it maybe in a few months, but I definitely want to get my hands on it and, and uh, try um, uh, and compare the two. So having said that, um, I would say that uh, lighting-wise, uh, I've been very satisfied with uh, with uh, AIs. Um, I first ran it for the first six months with the same schedule. So I did the eight hours of just blue with half an hour of uh, kind of this spectrum. Uh, but lately, so about last month, I've actually started to depart from that and started to get a lot more of the white um, in the color spectrum just to experiment and see uh, how the, color, uh, the corals will react. And I must say uh, that I did not see any uh, detriment to color. If anything, I think things are uh, improving, but I cannot, attribute that, I cannot attribute that to either color spectrum or the fact that I'm running skimmer less, maybe I'm dosing more, so many variables. So I cannot say what um, this, uh, what the effect of it was, but in any case I did not see any uh, detriment, I did not see uh, algae popping up or anything of that. Having said all of this, uh, if you're interested, uh, you can go to Aquatic Log and find out all the parameters uh, for this particular tank that are up to speed, uh, sorry, up to date, and also um, you can, you should be able to download uh, uh, a uh, um, uh, schedule for my uh, AI uh, lights as well and I can help out but at the end I'm going for 220 par on average between 220 and 250 depending on your alkalinity which is about 8 for me, uh, 8 and a half and uh, the amount of nutrients that I'm fitting into the tank so that's that's where we're at yes, <coughs> alright there <coughs> Was that you or me? Uh, I think it's me. But don't worry. Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> Sounds good. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Dimitri, for having us in your home. The tank's looking great. Lots of growth since last time we were here. So hopefully we can check it out again sometime and see how things are uh, turning out. It would be my pleasure. I always uh, enjoy having you around, and I like your website and yep. the channel. And hopefully the next time you guys will uh, experience even uh, more coral beauty. So yeah, exactly. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Dimitri.